concrete. I love this, these tiles. Um, they were from Leonardo and they were called Word Up and they looked almost like graffiti uh, scratched on concrete. I thought they were particularly great. Mirage's Oxy looked like uh, concrete as well. I think this is upstairs. <laughs> So when we talk about um, some of these marble or slate designs, and when we get up close and personal, we noticed a marked improvement this year in uh, the digital inkjet printing. The lines were crisp and clear, and you know, sometimes when you get close to them, you see a lot of blurry edges, but, but not so. So let me show you some examples. This is Cheese of Slate. Fondo Valle's stone print, Casamud's Lavania, which is very slate light looking, and Lavania, in fact, in Italian means blackboard. Um, bold geometrics. As for patterns, I, I really go for the, the bigger, bolder looks, uh, and one of my favorites was Hex from Etruria. Um, this design was made out of beveled edge tiles and a lot of the design inspiration here came from the 50s and 60s and um, even some of the early computer maze games. Equally bold was um, Pietro Contemporaneo at Cotto Veneto. And then there's this um, three-dimensional geometric called Enigma. Here it's in a, a just a monochromatic look, so you, the, the form becomes more important than the color combination. Okay, we have a geometric kind of a painterly quality from Di, from Di Treviso. Uh, a kind of marble-looking um, monochromatic look. I Casa Mode sort of mod look. It looks as, almost as if it were concrete embedded into the tile. Um, just a simple rectangular look from Vietri Antico. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the mod look from Vietri Antico. Okay, the softer side of tile. We saw a lot of tiles that had um, almost a painterly hand-painted look, uh, as if they were done in a, a gouache or a watercolor. This is a um, Penelato series from Cevi Edizione. Girasole from Firenze took its inspiration from mac macrame and it's hand painted. Casamud's trapezio uh, looked as if it were carpet tiles and that's part of what I was talking about, kind of like the soft felted look. On a smaller scale, we have a La Dolce Vita from Elios. It looks like a, a patchwork quilt, yet each of the individual squares has a, a beautiful pattern of its own. Um, this could be almost a, um, I'm going to say almost a damask fabric quality. Here we've got a bit of bling with uh, lit literally a um, gilt gold poured into the, the incised sections of the, the tile. Another damask looking quality uh, that's two dimensional because behind that is a flat surface. A mosaic from Sechis and almost no one does it better.
more of a, a fabric quality from Fab on the walls. And from Rex, we have a chiaroscuro stamped crocodile effect. Uh, this is Charlie, and it's from De Treviso. Again, it looks as if it's a hand-painted uh, watercolor. This is Iris from Bardelli, else by Marcel Wanders. <coughs> also from Bardelli were these very large-scale tulips by um, Ronald Vanderhulst. You can never go wrong with Fornicetti. The patterns are always charming. These are from Bardelli. And uh, in a similar vein, we have Play. Okay, as far as the technological uh, innovations are concerned, there's uh, a lot to talk about. One of the big things uh, that's been going on for the past couple of years has been the ventilated wall systems. Uh, this year, we saw more tile manufacturers teaming up with the producers of framework. And one such is uh, Marazzi. This is a, um, an office renovation, a warehouse renovation for Wilkinson Office Products. And it was by the American Michael P. Johnson. It's in Tempe, Arizona. And here is another Marazzi project. Uh, it's a hotel. And the good thing about these, these ventilated wall systems, they're great for, for retrofits. Um, they can help restore the building's exterior, they minimize environmental impact, um, they increase thermal efficiency, and overall help to reduce energy costs. So speaking of renovations in flooring systems, um, we have two introductions that were significant. One was from Laminum and the other was from Imola. Uh, Laminum's Emotiona consists of 20 by 60 inch ceramic tiles with interlocking back panels that are made of 40% recycled material. <coughs> and this product uses 50% less adhesive on walls and requires none for flooring. Similarly, we have Imola's clip tile. Um, that's got an innovative plastic uh, support system and an automatic clip that allows state-of-the-art tile laying without the need for glue or grout so that you can walk on it immediately afterwards. As far as formats are concerned, think tall and skinny. Um, tall as large as three meter by one meter. Again, that was 10 feet by three feet and um, thickness is down to three millimeters thick. Here's an example from Cotto d'Este. Okay, and if, as an example of one of the introductions in the three millimeter thick, or shall I say thin, um, was laminum's Philo. And many of these options can be had with a half a millimeter fiberglass backing to give them added strength. Okay, Cotto d'Este expanded its Curlite collection, including, that included a black and white series, and this is only three and a half millimeters thick. Sustainability. There's um, a lot to talk about on the green front, both in terms of products and uh, tiles ecological benefits that are inherent to, to the material. So products first. I loved this group. It is from Trend. It's from their Liberty Collection. The color range is extraordinary. And the tiles are made using up to, whoops, 75% post-consumer content of glass. Um, Vogue had a color range of another story, but what was kind of interesting there was it was the result of a whole revamped production process. 
um, 100% of the unfired waste was reused. 